the four things that you must be doing as a short-term rental host to maximize your gross revenue, and most importantly, your profit. It's a little bright out here, so I'm gonna put these on. So I'm gonna start with number one. The number one thing is once you launch your property, you really need to, this is for people that are just getting started or you're buying your next property, you need to get to like 20 reviews as quickly as you can. And a lot of people who follow me during COVID are, you know, they've heard me talk about raise your pricing, raise your pricing. Well, it's a different game today. And in today's game, it's really more occupancy driven, especially in today's climate. We are in the off season right now, really the shoulder season, getting ready to go into the ultra peak season during the summer. One of the things that's super important is when you do launch on Airbnb, you do launch on Verbo, take advantage of the 20% discount, set your pricing accordingly in the setup process, because then you're gonna get a big push from them. And the reviews are something that's critical. It gives you credibility, but it's actually literally like the second most important component to the Airbnb algorithm to increase your rankings. It's also the number one thing to help you with conversion rate optimization. And I've gone through this a lot because I've deployed a lot of new listings. And what I find is if I don't get them super quick, the property sits there and it's stagnant because one, your review score until you hit three doesn't show, whether it's 4.8, 4.9, or 5.0. Two, social proof from a marketing perspective is absolutely critical. So as you get these reviews that are coming in, I want you to screenshot them and add them. So I want a review is to go in image placement number seven. Super important. So you have your first five images that show up on the home page of your listing. I don't want it to go there. Number six is always going to be like your sign. So hopefully you've branded your property. You have a name, you have a logo. If you don't, you can just go to fiber.com or 99designs, have them help you make a logo. But I want that to go into number six. And here's why. So one, we don't want to take away the super valuable space on the first five on that homepage. But number six is the perfect spot for experienced Airbnb guests to be able to find you and book direct. Don't just drop your logo in as an image. You need to have it on some type of sign on the outside of your property, could even be on the inside. Drop an image of that in and then down below, just put welcome to your property name and the city name. And the experienced direct bookers are gonna go through that. They're gonna find the brand of your property and then they will seek you out on Google to be able to book direct. It's one of the th big contributors of how I book 41% direct. Tip number two, since we're talking about direct bookings, is a lot of people go in and they just match the pricing to the OTAs on their direct booking websites. So you have two options here, and this is all about leverage points. Number one, you either need to raise your fees to match what Airbnb and Verbo are gonna be charging after you paid their fee. So that way you're generating the same amount of gross revenue and they're getting the same pricing on all three platforms. Or if you were actually gonna do off-platform marketing, then don't increase the rate, but leverage when you're doing buy, sell, trade group on Facebook posts, when you're doing organic social media, in your email marketing, we'll talk more about that here in a couple of minutes, but make sure that you're leveraging that if you book direct, you can get a discount, the best available pricing. Think about this, if you ever call Southwest Airlines, if you fly Southwest, the very first thing that it says, it doesn't say hello, it doesn't say thank you for calling Southwest Airlines, lower fares may be available online. And there's a lot of e-commerce companies that are really good, you know, that do this and they wanna drive traffic to the website because it costs them less money. Well, for us, we can leverage that in our social media marketing to for people to save money when they book direct with us. Then we own the customer, which we do not do when they book through Airbnb and Verbo. Number three, I'm a big proponent of StayFi. Arthur Kolker's got a great company. It helps us capture emails when guests check into our property. Just like when we go to a hotel and you have to punch in your room number and your last name typically to get access to the Wi-Fi, or you go to a Starbucks or a local coffee shop, they're capturing your information so then they can remarket to you. And this is, once again, this is another big contributor of how I do 41% direct bookings, is I'm capturing not only the booker, the guest, the person that paid, but I'm capturing everybody else that wants to utilize the Wi-Fi as well. So that's kind of, you know, 3A 
3B is now we have to use that. And there's a reason that I use a platform called MarketMySTR. You can check that out at MarketMySTR.com. It's the only true all-in-one marketing platform for social media, text message marketing, email funnels, direct booking, website hosting, video hosting. Everything can be managed through an app. Super affordable, super easy to be able to utilize, but it's the only one that's built specifically for short-term rental hosts and co-hosts and PMs just like you and me. So that's what I use, not only for my direct booking uh, sites, but I also use that for my email marketing. And what's really critical is the 200-day funnel. You may have heard about this before. So this is something that is exclusive either as a client of Market My STR or in my mastermind or my inner circle. And the 200-day funnel ties into the sales cycle of most of my markets that I invest into are drive-in vacation rental markets. That means that I'm in a non-urban area, which get a lot of last minute bookings. I have, most of my properties are larger and they take, they usually book up farther in advance with multiple families, groups, church retreats, whatever. I look at my average nightly, my, the markets that I'm in with my properties, the average booking lead time is right around 100 days. I could fluctuate down to 90, could go up to 110, 120, uh, but it's around 90 days. Sure, I get last minute bookings like everybody else, but specifically when I'm looking at the the high season, the ultra peak season, which for summer is getting ready to start here in about 30 days. It becomes really important that I, when a guest checks out and also the other five, 10, 15 people that have stayed with them as their guests, that I start nurturing them. And nurturing is a really critical term when we're talking about marketing. We don't wanna be hardcore sales because people are gonna opt out. Nobody wants to be sold to. So I provide value in my 200 day funnel. And the reason it's 200 days is because that average market lead time is about 100. If you're in an urban area, then you're probably gonna want like 325 day you know, funnel. And you can do emails and text messages, uh, which is what I use, predominantly email. I throw in about four or five text messages over that period. We're talking about eight, nine months. And that's what brings the people back. So I've just, I just had a meeting with Scott Hill, the, uh, my co-founder in Market My SDR, and I, we've had the triggers, the timing set up so you can automate this but now I've given him the templates, the written copy. So that way all you have to do is go in and download it, copy, paste it, it's all set up for you uh, to where you can have that 200 day marketing funnel uh, as well. The other great thing and kind of the secret about Market My SDR is it's cheap, uh, but it eliminates your email marketing costs separately than your text messaging, then your web hosting for your direct booking pages and websites, your video hosting, every, you do everything all inside of one platform. Uh, so I'm doing all of that inside. I'm doing my social media posting inside of it so you can schedule. It's got a scheduler. You can manage uh, everything from an app right here on your phone. It's just super easy uh, to be able to utilize. Plus, you get my direct booking website. There's only 300 templates. Literally, you get my templates that I use for my personal properties that you can go in and basically just copy, click, edit the, edit the copy to turn it to yours, use my formatting. You can see how I've used video, drone footage, walkthroughs, all that type of stuff. So that's kind of secret weapon number three. Now, before you really dive into marketing, number four is really important. And number four is that you truly understand your buyer persona. And a buyer persona is a fictional representation of your ideal guest. And what I mean by this is it's not, a lot of people use the word avatar. Well, an avatar is, you know, a female, she's in the forties, blah, blah, blah. I want to have a more intimate relationship. So I, my buyer persona for most of my properties is Wealthy Wendy and Wealthy Walter. But I also have a condo and some smaller properties that aren't, you know, huge mega super properties. And I'm going after, you know, small business Bob and Betty as well. And typically small business Bob and Betty are going to travel you know, with maybe another family to split the cost. It doesn't work very well in three bedroom, two baths configuration, which the majority have, unfortunately, that's why I'm not a fan of those. But for the bigger properties and even Bob and Betty, they travel with, Bob and Betty travel with multiple families, Wealthy Wendy, Wealthy Walter, literally, usually travel alone. They might have another family with them if they book a larger property, but I know where they live. Do they live in the suburbs or do they live in an urban area? I know what they drive. Are they Range Rover? Are they Mercedes uh, people that they're driving? Are they into bourbon? Are they into wine? Or it could be both. You know, do they fly coach? Do they fly first class? Do they fly private? Are they skiers or are they beach people? 
right? These are all things that go into, and you notice I give it a name. And I actually have a photo of Wealthy Wendy and a photo of Wealthy Walter, along with Small Business Bob and Small Business Betty. Because I wanna have this intimate relationship. I wanna know the interests, I wanna know what they like, I wanna know what they spend money on. All of those things Facebook knows about, right? Facebook's like the smartest algorithm on the planet. It's smarter than Google. It knows more about us because we share more on social media, on Instagram and Facebook than we do on Google. So I build out these buyer personas and this is something, if you're a marketing guy, I was customer 33 at HubSpot back in early 2007. I learned all my marketing skills, or a lot of them from going through the whole inbound marketing process with HubSpot and that, intimate relationship with your buyer persona, for me, it starts before I even buy a property. When I'm looking at properties, like if I'm on Zillow, on my phone, and you know I'm searching STR Insights, I'm looking at different markets, and I go to Zillow, and then I, I find a property that I like, then I'm thinking about what's the marketability in the listing, and who am I gonna market this to? Who is this gonna serve? Then that impacts the design and the amenities uh, that I'm gonna add to the property. Because a lot of you will add like a fire pit that's sitting right here next to me I'm at my home on my deck, or the fireplace that you see me film in front of that I just built. A lot of you will have that stuff and just put it in your listing, right? And well, I'm gonna say, if I have wealthy uh, Wendy, I want wealthy Wendy out here having wine with her husband on the deck or the family watching tele, uh, you know, a soccer game or something down by the the fireplace, whatever that is, I'm thinking about how I'm gonna market this. It all starts with the hero image. But that buyer persona is the critical component. If I don't nail this, I'm not gonna design appropriately. I mean, am I putting, am I doing robes and slippers in the master suite? Maybe, maybe not. Am I doing an additional coffee bar, a small setup for wealthy Wendy and Walter? Yes, do I do that at a $200 a night price point for you know Bob and Betty? If I have room, sometimes I do, so I can give them an, an elevated you know, experience to help bring them back, and many times I don't. So there's a lot of things that I do amenity-wise, I stock-wise, my pricing's different for Wendy than it is for Betty. And that's something that we need to know, the geographic area that we're investing into, the bigger amenities that they want, right? So I always, and kind of the, the pro tip, the caveat that I'll, I'll, I'll give to you is I always take care of the booker more than I take care of the other guests. And that doesn't mean I take anything away, but the booker has extra toilet paper, they have extra towels, they do have, every house has the robes and the slippers. Every house now does have the little 200, not an expensive, but a little $200 coffee bar, you know, set, set up for them. They have extra blankets. If there's big enough closets, they have a suite of pillows, just like four or five other pillows to where we have super soft, medium, and firm. A lot of these little extra things, if I have the room, I can actually deploy for both you know, small business Bob and Betty and wealthy Wendy because wealthy Wendy commands, she demands that experience. Look, everybody that's renting from us wants a property that is nicer than their home. Even Bob and Betty, right? And so it may not have thousand dollar murals hung up behind the beds. It may not have our house furniture. It might be, you know, decorated out of home goods and Amazon and Walmart and that type of stuff to be super cheap to match the criteria of the guest but there's small things like elevating your bedding, just having a couple of extra nice accent pillows so it renders better in your photos, but that's all tied to your buyer person. So hopefully you can see how kind of all of these things correlate together step by step by step to create more value and most importantly, to create more marketing opportunity for you. Because at the end of the day, the better that we can market our property, the more money that we're gonna make. My, my super skill, in this industry, I really have three of them. I'm an exceptional property picker. You know, I hit triples, doubles and triples with almost every property. That's really what a super property is about, folks. It's not the size of the property, you know, and people that just rely on data are gonna hit singles and, and some doubles. But I get to those doubles and triples based on these types of intangibles. But the most important thing, you probably hear the birds out here, I'm in my backyard. I start from the outside first and then work my way in. When I'm buying, I'm buying the outside first, then I'm going inside. Anybody can do murals, anybody can add new furniture, anybody can replace flooring, anybody can do that. And I know it's harder for some than others to do interior design, but we can't replace what's out here. Keep that in mind when you're making the investment and know your buyer persona before you close on that property. Know what your first five images are gonna be before you put an offer in 
on that property. Start formulating your marketing plan with documentation of some short videos, some phones when you go on site. Download the photos off of Realtor.com, Redfin, Zillow, whatever you're using to look at the properties and start evaluating. Most importantly, keep notes as you go from property to property to property. Keep the data, keep the intangibles because I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. The intangibles are where you scale from the 75th percentile to over 90th percentile. The intangibles are how, you know, guys like John Bianchi and Kenny Bedwell can almost guarantee hitting, you know, singles and doubles every single time. They, they won't make a mistake based on the data. Well, I run the same data, but then the intangibles are what take it to the next level for me. And it's not just adding hot tubs. It's not just adding fire pits. There's intention around the psychology of what Wealthy Wendy and what Small Business Betty want. Hopefully you'll start implementing this. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I got another video coming right behind this if you found any value. Most importantly, hit that subscribe button if I've even given you one ounce of value in this video. And I'll see you next week.